it surprise you to know that Charles Spurgeon was a big proponent of street preaching, or as he called it, open air preaching? He was, so much so that he devotes two entire chapters to the topic of street preaching in his book titled Lectures to My Students, a book that I've been discussing here on this channel for quite a few episodes now. I don't think it would be inaccurate to say that most pastors today have never experienced preaching on the street or preaching outside of uh, a church service and in the general public. Every pastor, in my opinion, ought to have experienced street preaching at least a couple of times in his, in his career. I think Spurgeon was of the same mind when he said, no sort of defense is needed for preaching out of doors, but it would need very potent arguments to prove that a man had done his duty who has never preached beyond the walls of his meeting house. In today's episode, I want to summarize chapter 18 in Spurgeon's book, Lectures to My Students, a, title, a, a chapter titled, Open Air Preaching, Remarks Thereon. Now, the previous chapter in his book, chapter 17, is about street preaching, but it's more uh, a summary of the history of street preaching, and it's a really great chapter, and I actually had uh, debated about just reading it word for word and putting it uh, in on YouTube for the enjoyment of others. Uh, maybe I'll do that someday, but I would hope that if this topic... Uh, interests you that you would take the time to to read lectures to my students and chapter 17 and 18 where Spurgeon discusses this idea of preaching outside open air preaching or street preaching Spurgeon begins by giving the benefits of taking preaching from behind the pulpit and out into the great outdoors he said the great benefit of open air preaching is that we get so many newcomers to hear the gospel who otherwise would never hear it. The gospel command is, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But it is so little obeyed that one would imagine that it ran thus. Go into your own place of worship and preach the gospel to the few creatures who will come inside. We ought actually to go into the streets and lanes and highways, for there are lurkers in the hedges, tramps on the highway, street walkers and lane haunters whom we shall never reach unless we pursue them into their own domains. Some of our brethren are prosing on and on to empty pews and musty hassocks, while they might be conferring lasting benefit upon hundreds by quitting the old walls for a while and seeking living stones for Jesus. Not only is open-air preaching a good and biblical method for spreading the gospel, but it's also something that is beneficial to the church to move a scheduled worship service from the inside of the, the sanctuary or auditorium for those who, with more modern nomenclature to take it, the church service from the inside and, and go to the outside, whether that be uh, even something as simple as going outside on the church campus to if your church has a lawn or a, a parking lot or taking it a little bit further from the church and going to a city park, it would be a, a blessing and a help to your people to, on occasion, stir things up a little bit and take them beyond the comforts of the confines of the church auditorium and have a preaching service somewhere out in the open. Listen to what Spurgeon says about this. I am quite sure, too, that if we could persuade our friends in the country to come out a good many times in the year and hold a service in a meadow or in a shady grove or on the hillside or in a garden or on a common, it would be all the better for the usual hearers. The mere novelty of the place would freshen their interest and wake them up. The slight change of scene would have a wonderful effect upon the more somnolent. The preaching and the rest of it get to be so usual that they might as well not be at all. Hence a change of place might be useful. It might prevent monotony, shake up indifference, suggest thought, and in a thousand ways promote attention and give new hope of doing good. So every now and then, perhaps take the church service outside 
and do as Jesus did and set the people down on the hillside and preach and teach. It's interesting to read Spurgeon's accounts of his own open-air preaching. I know probably the, uh, the assumption we make of Spurgeon is that he was so very much, uh, so very popular as a preacher in the pulpit that he never did anything else, and that's not true at all. He uh, had a lot of experience preaching outside, and all of his wisdom and, and knowledge that he has on this topic are not theories, but from his own experience. In this chapter, he shares many insights about his own involvement in street preaching, including uh, some tips on where to preach in the, on the street or outside, and places to avoid, and, and how to pick a good spot for open-air preaching. When it comes to preaching on streets, he suggested, in London or any other large town, it is a great thing to find a vacant spot where you can obtain a right to hold services at your pleasure. If you can discover a piece of ground which is not yet built over, and if you can obtain the use of it from the owner till he covers it, it will be a great acquisition and worth a slight expense in fencing. For you are then the king of the castle, and disturbers will be trespassers. It is a great gain when your place of worship has even a small outside space, like that at Surrey Chapel or upon the tabernacle steps. For here you are beyond the interference of the police or drunken men. If we have none of these, we must find street corners, triangles, quiet nooks, and wide spaces wherein to proclaim the gospel. Is there a vacant lot in a well-trafficked area in your town or city? Is your church building itself perhaps near a place where people walk by all the time? These are prime spots for an open-air service. Spurgeon lived in a day and age when cities were built around people, and I understand in this modern age we live uh, where most of us perhaps live where suburbs are built around cars, and so we might find it harder to attract a spontaneous crowd like the street preachers of Spurgeon's day. But it can still be done, and I think we should try. I think we can find open-air preaching would be beneficial to our church ministries. In addition to telling us uh, the best uh, environments for open-air preaching, Spurgeon also advises us in this chapter about the kinds of sermons to use when we go street preaching or when we preach out in the open. He said, In the street a man must keep himself alive and use many illustrations and anecdotes and sprinkle a quaint remark here and there. To dwell long on a point will never do. Reasoning must be brief, clear, and soon done with. The discourse must not be labored or involved, neither must the second head depend upon the first. For the audience is a changing one, and each point must be complete in itself. The chain of thought must be taken to pieces, and each link melted down and turned into bullets. You will need not so much Saladin's saber to cut through a muslin handkerchief as Coeur lion's battle axe to break a bar of iron. Come to the point at once, and come there with all your might. So when you're preaching in the street uh, or out in the open, you can't preach what you typically would preach behind the pulpit. It's a different audience. It's a different setting. The sermons need to be shorter. As Spurgeon said, I don't really need to belabor the point, but rather we need to get to the point when we're street preaching. One common difficulty in street preaching is uh, hecklers and objectors who interrupt the sermon. Spurgeon advises that we essentially ignore them and not allow them to get us entangled into pointless debates. He reminds us that our object is not to conquer them in logical encounters, but to save their souls. Real difficulties we should endeavor to meet, and hence a competent knowledge of the evidences is most desirable. But honest objectors are best conversed with alone, when they are not ashamed to own themselves in the wrong. And this we could not expect of them in the crowd. Christ is to be preached whether men will believe in him or no. So keep in mind that street preaching is not an invitation for public debate. Uh, many will take it to mean that, but that's not what it is. You're there to proclaim the gospel, and if folks believe and are receptive, praise God. If not, 
You've done your duty. I will add to Spurgeon's wise counsel that when you go street preaching, take a friend or two with you, perhaps even muster a group from your church to go, and, and use these uh, friends and co-workers in the ministry uh, to talk to the people on the street as you preach. Let them encounter them one-on-one -on -one and perhaps uh, do soul winning work on the street and maybe even run a little interference so, so that you can preach without uh, the uh, interjections of objectors and interrupters. And then when you're out of steam, and it could be if you're preaching on the street for a while that you'll notice you can't preach as long as you normally would because it takes a little bit more exertive force. Uh, when you run out of steam, you can have one of those uh, friends of yours, maybe a preacher friend or a good man from your church, to stand up and start preaching. When you're done, this tag team style of street preaching is effective uh, and also encouraging. It can be a very discouraging thing to go street preaching all by yourself. A lot of guys do it, and I admire them for it. But it's easier, I think it's uh, more efficient and more encouraging if, and more edifying for everyone uh, if you take a handful of people with you. If you're a preacher and you've never gone street preaching, I would plead with you that you would do it. I think we need more street preaching in the cities all over this world. It's good for your preaching. It's good for your church too. Uh, and it's, it's good for your city. The gospel needs to be proclaimed openly. I'll close with one more quote from Spurgeon. He said, I am persuaded that the more of open air preaching there is in London, the better. If it should become a nuisance to some, it will be a blessing to others if properly conducted. If it be the gospel which is spoken and if the spirit of the preacher be one of love and truth, the results cannot be doubted. The bread cast upon the waters must be found again after many days. I hope this video encourages you and helps you, and I pray that God will give you holy boldness this coming Lord's Day as you preach His Word. Bye-bye.